So our God and our Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for the things that you have caused us to learn already. May your name be glorified. Even as we look into your word, we ask that you will grant us an infinite supply of your spirit and that you will invade our circumstances to bring us liberty on all sides. For those on site and online, we ask that you will bless and that your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you have your seat in God's presence? And as you do, let's open to Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter number 13. We'll read verse 2. Just the beginning part of it. I want to see how God helps us to draw wisdom from his word. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 2. You will help me read gently, sir. Yes, sir. Verse 2. A man shall... A man. A what? A man. Uh, sometimes when the Bible says man, he's not talking about the male figure. He's talking about everyone that was created. He's talking about humanity. So when he says a man, it means that every one of us becomes a victim of it. Like when he says men ought always to pray and not to faint. So the moment you find yourself a man, whatever he wants to say at this point puts you in context of this very reality. Continue, sir. A man shall eat good. A man shall eat what? Good. A man shall eat what? Good. Have you ever in the Bible say, come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. That means good is something to be tasted. A good life is something to be tasted. A good mind is something to be tasted. A good account balance is something to be tasted. A good calling, a good gifting is something to be tasted. He said, come, taste, and see. So, at this point, he said, a man shall eat good. Continue. By the fruit. By the what? Fruit. By the what? Fruit. Now, a fruit is not something that arrives in the morning. A fruit is something that you will have to plant. You will have to germinate you will have to water nurture whatever you planted will have to come to a certain level of maturity and then you get what fruit you can't plant a mango tree today and then expect to yield something out of it you may need three to five years depending on the species you don't plant corn and you expect that after two weeks you will reap from it you may need about three to how many months three months and then you can arrive your labors to eat fruit. He says, a man shall eat good by the fruit. That means a man can eat evil by the fruit. A man can eat shame by the fruit. But if a man will eat good by the fruit of what? Of what? Of his mouth. Now, listen, look up. I want to stop there. Look up. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth it does not negate the place of a prophet that means another mouth can speak into your life and you will eat good but if you leave the responsibility of good in your life to the prayers of the pastor the prophecies of the prophet the impartations of the apostle the declarations of an evangelist, the blessings of your parents, your good may not be complete. But if this kind of good will come in your life, your mouth is going to prepare you to eat that fruit. Therefore, whatever your mouth releases, which is words, are going to be seeds of which 
you will have to eat it. Have you heard when there's an adage they say, eat your words? Uh -huh. But if the words you were to eat were words you just spoke. The funny thing about words is that they are not like mango. They are not like corn. It means that if you plant corn any time, you need three months to reap. So words don't give you an exact timeline of your fruit. There is a word you can speak now and you will reap the fruit of it now. For example, if a man and his wife has misunderstanding and the woman looks at the man and says, you useless husband. There is a possibility to reap of the fruit of those words now. But when a man looks at his child and says, you are a non-entity. It is when the child comes back from JS3 with Junior Wayek Resort that the man will, he thinks his child is a, non, is a dollar. He doesn't know that that report card he's seen is a fruit of a word he spoke five years ago. The inconsistencies of the timing of fruit when it comes to words should make every man careful of how he utters words because a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Words are fruits in themselves or seeds in themselves. Sometimes words are seeds and sometimes they are fruits. They are fruit in the sense that the Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That means the abundance of the heart is the seed, the mouth is the fruit. So you hear the Bible say, let us bring the fruit of our lips, even the sacrifice of praise. So when you are praising God, they can be fruits. For example, when um, Mr. Shalom was sharing his testimony, the first time he was saying, thank you, Jesus, when the police were still dragging him, he was sowing seed. But you see, the other one, when he came back, after the deliverance, and now said, thank you, Jesus. It is the same word, but it is now fruit. A fruit of a sacrifice of praise. Hear me. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Jesus healed 10 people. Told 10 lepers, go, you will be healed. And as they were going, they got healed. Only one came back. All of them were healed. Was it leprosy or blindness? Lepers, beautiful. So they were cleansed on their journey going. Then one person just paused. I need to go and give him a fruit of praise. It was in the return to give Jesus the fruit of praise. Jesus now said, where are the other nine? That means Jesus had been expecting them to come back with fruit. Reason being that even though he gave them healing, there was a good he still had for them that only the fruit of their lips will give them. His benevolence as one who was anointed that went about doing good and healing all that will the oppress of the devil will not be sufficient to give them that other good. They must bring the fruit of their mouth to get it. So one brought back the fruit of his mouth. And he said, I came to tell you thank you. You, you prayed. And I got healed. You fasted along with me and I got delivered. You gave me a counsel and it worked out. I came with a fruit. Then Jesus now said, where are the other nine? Is it only this Samaritan that remember to come and say thank you? He now told him, go. You have been made whole. Let me explain. You've been made complete. That lepers that he cleansed, I can tell you something about their life, even though it was not written. One, they were not married. Because if a leper touches anybody, the person becomes unclean. Two, they had no jobs. Because if you give him a job to do anything he touches, is unclean. Three, they had no businesses. 
That means they were sentenced to the life of begging. And whoever was going to give them something will have to throw it into the coin plate or whatever it is for them to receive. That means the only thing they got from Jesus was healing from leprosy. They will go and write, write appointment letters. They will start looking for wives. They will, they will labor for those ones. But that other person, Jesus now said, go, you have been made whole. It means every other thing about your life that was missing, apart from leprosy, you have it now. How did he get it? The fruit of his what? Of his mouth. Beautiful. But there's a challenge in the scriptures. Help me read Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7. But when ye pray, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. Do not use vain repetitions. Look up. Jesus was trying to give counsel about prayer because if you met an average Pharisee, you can hear him saying, Jesus bless me, Jesus bless me, Jesus bless me, Jesus bless me. And the reason he's saying it is that he needs that prayer to reach one hour. So when he walks outside, he will have his shoulder high and say, I have prayed for one hour today. Jesus called those words vain repetition. Not because Jesus himself didn't repeat words when praying. When Jesus was praying, the Bible says he went back for one hour and repeated the same word. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, thy will be done. That was what Jesus repeated for like three hours. But his own was not vain repetition. Why? The intent of the word is what makes it vain. It's not that you were really telling God, Jesus bless me, Jesus bless me, Jesus bless me. No, you didn't mean it when you said, Jesus help me. You didn't mean it. You were only saying it because you wanted it to look that way. Uh, the, the principle I'm trying to bring out there is that a man can utter words that God calls vain. Uh, when, when God means the words are vain, he means they are empty. That means the word... I saw something online that made me laugh. Someone went to buy, well, I don't know or not, but you know when you go to buy yam. Madam, how much is your yam? Let's assume, say 2,000 naira. Say, Madam, now, now, sell it 500. Madam, say, no, 15, 500, 15, 500, 15. Madam sold it 500. You carried the yam, kept it inside. You were happy. Man, I have caught this woman today. I have finished her. Then when you went to mass, you caught the yam. You saw brown. You cut the yam. It's all brown. By the time you finish cutting all the yam, it was completely rotten. She sold a vain yam to you. Inside the yam, there was nothing. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. What if the fruit is empty? What if when you said, Jesus, I love you, it was a lie? Do you know how many times you come and say, Pastor, 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 I will serve Jesus. Then the pastor looks inside your words. And your words are like a balloon. Beautiful on the outside. But when he touches it, it's empty inside. When you pastor for a little time, a point will come that you will, you will have to study how to discern vain words. Because one of the people that everybody lies to sweetly is a pastor. Somebody came many years back and said, Stop, sir. I came to confess. I fornicated and I had an abortion. I said, Okay. Abortion. He said, eh. So as the person was talking, he didn't put S behind the abortion. So abortion is no one. But when you put abortions, so, I, I say, how many? How many? Let, if we want to treat the typhoid, let's know the level of the typhoid so that we will administer that tablet or injection. She rounded up by saying three. Meanwhile, I had seen five. 
Say, sister, but I'm seeing five. Then she now say, eh, I've lost count. <laughs> Two years down the line, the person showed up. The concoction the person used, I've forgotten, she told me. The concussion for the abortion had lifting involved. Lifting, you know lifting. So when the prayer was done, the spirits that kept record of the blood that was shed showed up with five lifting packs. Five lifting. One for each of them. So, you, you, this is the one you did. So, but the revelation was during deliverance. So when the person came back, I said, I, I, they, they came back and showed me the liftings that I used. I said, how many liftings? Say five. I said, it's, it was five. When the person said abortion, it was a vain word. It was empty of truth. And we needed to wait until we arrive at truth. Because if you will eat good, then the fruit of your mouth must not be vain. Help me read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6. I have a long journey and I need you to follow us. Follow tonight. 5 verse 6 Ephesians. Please, our microphone is, his microphone is, is he on? All right. Okay. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no man do what? Deceive you with vain words. It means there are vain words. That's what I've been saying. It's not just that you yourself can utter vain words. It means somebody can invest vain words. You know, when we come, when people come to the altar wearing suit and wedding gown, will you take this lovely lady to have and to hold in sickness and in health for better, for worse, for rich, richer and for poorer? You know, some people were sincere enough to come. And they ask the, the same lady, repeat that house for richer and for poorer. She said, for richer and for richer. Say, sister, is a lie. Even if you marry a multi-billionaire, are you hearing me? A day will come, he will walk into the house with his face frowned. And he will, he will, he will say, what happened? He said, I lost money. And that day, the wife is looking for is the wife that said for poorer. I have three billion, but I only have one billion now. And the wife say, are they here? Love is still here. Consistency is still here. He said, be careful. So, when, as you are maturing yourself, are you hearing me? To put fruits that you will eat good by, you should also discern the words of men. Lest men deceive you with vain words. The reason is this. Every vain word is going to backfire. Certain young men gathered together themselves and discussed on matters, studied on matters and everything. And then they drew a young man into the room that was possessed by devil. And the mistake they did, somehow it's like they locked the door. And then they looked at the man and they uttered words. You know, every man shall eat good by the fruit of his word. But I told you that it's not only good that you can eat. So they look at the young man and say, We adjure you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached. Come out! Spirits, spirits, they check content, not container. They are going somewhere. So the spirits looked at his word. They punctured the thing like balloon. There was nothing inside. Say, guy, these words. These guys should not eat good. They should not go out and testify that they casted out a demon. The fruit of their mouth is empty. So possibly among the seven of them, one went on Google and said, what's this guy's name? He said, you don't know his name. You don't know his name. Hey, you, do you know his name? You don't... Ah. Then somebody sent email to Hellfire. There's this guy trying to cast us out. Do you, do you know him? Then the demons say, ah, we know Jesus, we know Paul, but this name you are calling, sons of Skepha, they are sons, they don't even have identity yet. How do we do about it? Maybe another spirit just stroll into heaven 
and say, Lord, I just I came for a meeting. I, I know I've seen your servant Job, he's doing well, but there's this guy talking there. Did you send him? Then Jesus said, I do not know them, they are workers of iniquity. The demon came back. Say, say it again. You know, you know what it means? The way you wake up in the morning and say, my life go better. Then the demon say, you said it. You will suffer today. You know, people wake up in the morning and they just make confessions and I'm going somewhere tonight. Say, it shall be well with me. Eh? It shall be well with you. Meanwhile, the words you uttered were empty. That was the very reason why the, the demon decided we will we, we frustrate you the more. For, for this thing you just said. So the demons looked and said, say it again, say, we are sure you. They, they took out say, what you go do? They could beat this guy. Beat them. They even locked door. Beat them. Because there was no door, they, they cut out through window. Be, before you wake up in the morning and say, I am. I, there's this song. I know God says I am. What he says I am. I'm walking in power. As you are saying, walking in power, a demon is standing beside you. you. You were supposed to eat the fruit of these words, but the words are vain. The words are empty. My labor tonight is to bring us to a point where you will utter a word and it is not empty. So you can look at your tomorrow and say, My tomorrow is well. And when you say it, everything they plan concerning your tomorrow begins to rattle by the effect of that utterance. Not because you shouted when you were saying it, but they were not vain words. They were fruits. They were not empty words. And they will bring good into your life. Listen, every one of us must learn to speak into the realities of our lives. But first and foremost, don't utter empty words. The sons of Sifa. They are a practical of the empty words. Another example, maybe before I advance, the disciples came up and they looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, he said, we've been trying to cast out these demon things. We have used all the methods. Peter, Peter will have said, don't you remember the last one he saw? He just did like this and the demon left. So Peter will do like this. Please, if you have ever cast out a demon before, can I see your hand? Beautiful. Were there styles you tried? It didn't work. Eh? I, I tried casting out a demon many years ago. It was a little boy. He stood like this. Like an Iroko tree. No joint in his body was bending. I prayed my life out. The guy just stood like that looking at me. My, I, 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 I went and met my friend. I said, that guy, that boy. He's a boy who like four, five years. That boy, dear, I don't tire. How far? My friend now said, that boy said, <laughs> He didn't answer me. He left. It was later he told me that he had prayed for the boy before I came. Nothing happened. So the boy was an impossible case. Not because the utterances were given. Were not coming out. But they didn't have the capacity to make us eat the fruit of bringing that boy into deliverance. So when the young man, yours sincerely was tired. I moved to the altar. I left the boy. and went to the altar and knelt down. I said, Jesus, please. For the sake of your name. So that we will not be put to shame. Can you tell us what do we do about that boy? That's when the Holy Ghost says, Ah, what, what are you doing on the one? Just go there, bend down, look near his stomach and shout. So I went there and I shout. The moment I shouted for the first time, he did like this. I said, Ah, ah the thing they work. <laughs> so I went back again. I shouted. He did like this. Then, I think after like four or five times, I'm not sure, he, his body now moved. By the time his body moved, I was already tired of the former prayer. There was no voice to pray. So I looked at the boy, he was my tribal boy, and I tell him with our tribe, keep saying, Jesus, come and save me. He conducted his own deliverance. I had wasted energy with vain words until I found a word that had substance enough for me to eat the fruit. I was supposed to go back home and say, I have casted out the devil. I was supposed to go back and say, my future has become better. John. John chapter 6, 
and verse 63. If you are there, sir. Ah. It is what the, that quickened. It is the spirit that puts life into something. It means, listen, listen. Anything, living or non-living thing, if the Holy Ghost finds access into it, it quickens it. A handkerchief, a cloth, a shoe, the altar stand, your Bible. If the Holy Ghost ever enters a thing, he can give life to it. So Jesus is teaching us something. Continue, sir. That thing you said with your mouth. Listen, look at me, look at me. If I say, God bless you. Sure, it was my mother that was saying it. If it is only my mouth that said, God bless you. It is going to profit you what? Nothing. Hence, every word that is only a function of flesh. Is only going to profit not in short. What the flesh does is that it kill it. It will kill hope. I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying and nothing has changed. Even me, I have not changed. Nothing has changed. We need to check the prayer. Maybe the prayer is a function of vain repetition, vain words. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. Continue. The words that I speak unto you. I don't know how you speak, Peter. Paul, I don't know how you speak. I didn't know how you were trying to cast out the demon that it refused. I didn't know how you did what you were doing. But me, me, Jesus. Jesus. They are spirit. And they are what? They are life. They are what? Spirit and, and they are life. So if you wake up in the morning and say, my today is blessed. If it was your mouth that spoke it, it is not going to profit that day anything. But if it is a container, that word you spoke, if it's a container of spirit and a container of life, then it can profit you. It means... We must understand how to speak spirit and to speak life. A songwriter said, I speak spirit. I don't speak English. Someone corrected and said, I'm not just English. Yes. I speak life. I, speak. I know you are hearing English, la English language, but it's not just English I'm speaking. I speak spirit. I pray spirit. I preach spirit. I declare spirit. Follow tonight. I am so careful because I need it to, to be. It's a systematic understanding I want you to have. So when you wake up in the morning and you want to say, I'm blessed, pause, pause, pause. Is it your language you are speaking or English? Or is it spirit and life? That means the reason why everything Jesus said, it worked, was that the words that I speak to you, even if you were to open it and find it, there will be a flow of spirit. And there will be a flow of I had the story, I'm trying to remember the accurate words. People were trying to cast out the demon. Come out in the name of Jesus. Demon did not come out. And then this whole evangelist who could not speak good English arrived. Then he looked at the demon person. I think, I'm not sure now, but it's as if he spoke like this. Went in Jesus' name. You know when your English is not correct? But the demon, it heard it. 
You see this thing called preaching? It's not talk. You see this thing you are doing called singing? It's not melody. It's not words. It's how much of the spirit you can supply. I heard a story of Oyakilome that he was invited, um, Reverend Chris Oyakilome was invited by Daosa then to come and minister as a youth then. Because I think he was a youth member or so in the church then. And then he, he prayed, I think for like three days. And his voice had gone. So when he arrived at the altar and they gave him microphone, there was no voice. But there was spirit. And then power broke out. If you will command deliverances to men, it's not because you can speak English. If you will draw men into destiny, it's not because you can sing well. It's because every time your mouth brings forth a fruit, the fruit is a content of spirit. It's a content of life. The Bible says in the mouth of two or more witnesses, something can be established, isn't it? So let, let's look at somebody else that spoke and told us how he spoke. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. I pray for you from my heart that from this day you will change how you sing, how you preach, how you speak and how you pray so that the fruit of your mouth will be such that can command good into your life. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. In my speech and my speech. Can, can you start from verse? Start from verse 1. And I, brethren, uh -huh. when I came to you, when I came to preach, to sing, to lead prayer, to prophesy, came okay. not with excellency of speech. Boss, what did I throw away? Excellency. This Apostle Paul speaking of all people. He didn't mean don't speak good English. He didn't mean don't sing on the right key. He didn't mean don't learn how to lead prayer. But he said, when I came, there was a consciousness I had. And that consciousness was so much, I forgot the thing called excellency. I spoke in tongues in capital letters. I decreed and the demon in the boy stood. But when I came with, hey! What does that mean when you say hey like that? But that was the one that brought the difference. Please continue, sir. Excellency of speech or of wisdom? Uh -uh. You know wisdom, wisdom, there's a way, there's a way, there's a way to say this thing, do this thing. I, that was not how I came. Continue. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. When I came, I did not come with the excellency of speech and of wisdom. To declare unto you the testimonies of God. Continue. For I determined not to know anything among you. Pause. Did you see what he had to do? I determine not to know anything among you. Before you say into your life, it is well. You have to determine not to know Nigerian economy. You will determine not to know the fuel price. They said nothing good comes out of Nazareth. You will determine. See, people wake up and they just say things. Somebody came out from the seminary and he said he's like two interballistic missiles ready to take two cities. But the words were empty. If you don't hear me, if you don't determine, there are enough things that want to inspire your speech. The reason you are telling your friend, my life go better, is that you are expecting one two million naira. It is on the, on the strength of that money 
that you are declaring the fruit of your mouth. The reason you are saying it will be well with me is because there's a contract you are working on. And you feel when the contract works out, ah, they will know that the thing I said was true. E, is that how you determine what to say? Jesus is on. He said his words were spirit and life. Paul said he had to determine. Continue, sir. Save Jesus Christ. There was only one thing I considered when I was going to water that word. I considered Jesus Christ. When I was going to look at a sick person and say, be healed. I didn't consider how the cancer looked like. I didn't consider that they said there was a terminal disease. I didn't consider that, that the person had gone through it for eight years. I considered Jesus Christ. And because of that consideration, I looked at the sick and said, it shall be well. Because if you look at your a friend and tell him it will be well because you expect one million. One million is the content of that your word. It is not spirit and life that is the content of it. The words will fall to the ground if the contract fails. But Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not a dot or tittle of my word will fall to the ground. Every one of them will come to pass. How do I decree those kind of words? That even if everything crumbles, those words will happen. I will have to decree them by what Paul is teaching. I determine to know nothing. Save Jesus Christ. Continue, sir. And him crucified. Uh -huh. that, and him crucified. That means, and the price that was paid for me to make that declaration. Continue, sir. And I was with you in weakness mm -hmm. and in fear mm -hmm. and in much trembling mm -hmm. and my speech and Pause. my... I was with you in what? What was Apostle Paul inside when he was going to in, speak? In weakness. He was in what? In weakness. Another thing he was in what? In fear. So, there was weakness on ground. The police were tracking my trouser. There was fear on ground. There was what again? Trembling, much trembling. Everywhere was trembling, but while that was happening, and my speech, that was where my fast began from. It was not as if I was expecting someone to help me when I spoke. It was not as if things were good when I spoke. I've heard people say, I'm about to build a house. I'll build a house next year. The reason the person is talking is that he's saving money. In, he has been saving money. And with the look of things, if you keep saving like that for the next six months, that thing you spoke, your words were empty as far as Jesus is concerned. Your words were based on your salary. It will take only one accident. Then you will use the money to repair your car. And that's the end of your utterance. But when you are about to say, I'm about to build a house, there's fear that the price of cements have gone up. There's fear that the price of blocks have gone up. Everybody is trembling. Who came on in now? And then you showed up inside the trembling. And your speech, your own declaration negated everything on ground. Continue. And my speech uh -huh. and my preaching uh -huh. was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. It was not with enticing. I didn't do sweet talk. You know, if you are called into ministry, you will need to deal with this. And I'm still dealing with it. And I pray God to deal with it more. There's a tendency to give people sweet words. You know, you just want to encourage somebody. The person comes and meets you. What's happening to our volume? The person comes and meets you. And is presenting a scenario. I've done this, done this, done this. See what is happening, see what is happening. And in the verge of maybe trying to help the person, you say, don't worry, don't worry. It shall be well with you. Before you say it, but I calm down. Don't entice anybody. You know why? 
because you don't have the, you are not spirit and you are not life. So you don't have the capacity to make what you are saying to the people happen. The reason many people don't believe men of God and prophets today again is that they spoke enticing words. Something to sweet you. I was talking to someone not too long and I was trying to teach the person something. So I now gave a reference of something I said yes back to somebody. I said, ah, so, so, I was talking to someone some time back and I had to give the person counsel like this. And the, first thing the person in front of me said, you mean you spoke to someone like that? I said, hey, that's the truth now. I told the person, ah, this thing they are doing like this. So, <laughs> this is what is going to happen. Sometimes in the verse to entice people, we give or to, to, to draw members or something, we begin to speak enticing words. Listen to me. Listen to me. The most dangerous is when you begin to speak enticing words to yourself. When you begin to deceive yourself, I, I mean you are living in iniquity, you are telling yourself, life go better. <laughs> the Bible says, say it to the righteous. It shall be well with you. Say to the wicked, it shall be ill. Then you, you are saying that uh, somebody meant that they were years back and say, I heard you are a prophet. If you tell people things, they will happen. My life, my life, what will happen to my life? And he asked the man, are you born again? Before the man answered, he said, because if you are born again and you are walking with God, it shall be well with you. But if you are not born again, it will not be. We don't need any further prophecy. Any prophecy negating the scripture is not true. And even into church, enticing words have come. Maybe I, I feel a burden at this point, a little, a solemn burden. Can you tell yourself as you are standing there, I will not lie to myself. You know exactly the demands of God. You know it. But you are telling yourself, don't worry, it will be okay. And you are expecting it will be okay, will happen. When you know exactly what ought to be done. I will not entice myself. I will tell myself, black and white as it is. One of the principles I learned from my spiritual father, he said, be righteously strict to yourself. Don't, don't lie to yourself on this journey. That why others are praying five hours, you just wake up in the morning and you pray for two minutes. I know you tell yourself, <laughs> it will be well. My life go better. It's not by how long you pray. Ah. Jesus said, can you not tarry with me for at least one hour? Paul said, I prayed more than day all. I labored more than day all. I finished my course. They say, pray without season. You have found a new formula of it. And you have been telling yourself every morning, it is good. Don't lie to yourself. Tell yourself the truth. The, instead of saying it will be good, just wake up in the morning and say, I will pray. <laughs> when was the last time you told yourself that kind of declaration? Weeks back, I was talking to my wife. I said, I have a prayer point. I have a prayer point. And I'm, 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 I'm battling with the prayer point. She said, what is it? I said, blazing holiness, bright righteousness, and pure uprightness. That was my own declaration. When I wake up, I don't wake up and say, my life will go better today. When I wake up and say, you will be holy. You will be righteous. And you will be upright. Tell yourself the truth when you speak. Wake up in the morning and tell yourself, hey, hey, before I say it's going to be better, God, I'm sorry, I'll be stealing your money. I eat your tight. I eat your tight. Start from the truth. Don't use enticing words. Because one of the things that have affected the Pentecostal, Pentecostal setting is that the pastor sits and he keeps releasing vain words upon people. He knows that it's not going to happen. But he will still say it. And men with itchy ears are satisfied with vain words. You, you need to wake up in the morning and tell yourself the truth. Jesus did not look at his sleeping disciples and say, ah, you guys are sleeping. Grace, grace will cover for you. Grace will cover for you. Jesus didn't tell them that. He said, ah, you are sleeping. 
Will you not tarry for one hour? Tarry with me so that you don't enter into temptation. If not, you will enter. You will enter. It was Peter that carried his leg and went to where there was hot fire and sat down there and he denied Jesus three times. He entered. Can you be sincere to tell yourself the truth? Please, can you continue, sir? I have a journey. Not with enticing words of wisdom. Man's wisdom. Yes, man's wisdom. He had to specify because there's the yes. wisdom of God which is needed. Yes, but there is a man's wisdom. You see, um, somebody wanted to invite a certain man of God to come and preach. So, it was a pastor. A pastor with a massive... If I call his name, everybody here will know him. Everybody. Maybe except a toddler that does not know what is happening. So they said, ah, there's this man of God. Invite him. So he said, ah, before I invite him, let me listen to his messages. That's wisdom. So he got the messages of that man of God and listened to them. When he finished, did you hear his verdict? He said, the things that this man of God is saying are true and they are deep. But the average believer cannot accept them. Let's not bring him. It will scatter church. Yes, yeah. If I call the pastor and say that, it will be a problem for everybody. So we will not do it. The pastor knows that, but he hid it from the members. So that the members can come as customers. There's a difference between customers and members. Customers come to church to gain things. Members come and become part of it. So when you hear somebody say, this will not program. That, if you see the person is a customer. But when somebody says, this is our program, is a member. There is man's wisdom by which church can be run. Somebody met my father in the Lord years ago. I said, this kind of preaching you are preaching, nobody will come or you will die a poor man. It's too much. Which kind of Christianity is this? He said, but that's what Jesus told me to preach. I thank God I met him. He's still alive. He cannot by any means be called a poor man. By any measurement you want to measure, you can't be called it. Be careful when men utter vain words. Know it and walk away. Where's my keyboard? Is? Ah. David, when, when you feel that there is grace for something, you help me. Now, are we together? Um, ah, hey, why? Set that here and sit down on the keyboard. Then I will tell you when to, when it is 740, you will now prayerfully join me. All right. So, we are, we are enticing words. We are halfway our journey. We will arrive by the message of God in Jesus' name. So, be praying for me. So, he said, I, but okay, not with one's, man's wisdom. Continue. Yes words of man with man's wisdom mm -hmm. but in demonstration but in the demonstration speak and of power now, this is the point i was trying to come remember jesus said he when jesus said he speaks the words he speaks their spirit and their life isn't it paul now said when he speaks he's also spirit but he now concluded power Because when Jesus came, he brought eternal life. But not only did he bring eternal life, he said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with what? Power. So that if you utter a word, the reason we say the word is not vain is that the content of your utterance is spirit. And not any spirit, oh, Holy Spirit. And power. Have I laid my understanding of what real words are now? So when a person speaks, what you are looking for in the person's words, if the words are such that we bring fruit for you to eat good, is that you'll be looking for the Holy Spirit and you'll be looking for power. Meanwhile, for Jesus, he was giving the Spirit without measure. Because not all of us carry the Holy Spirit at the same level. That's why I can stand here and say, be healed. 
And um, a couple of people will uh, go back and come back with testimonies. But when Benihi stands here and says, be he, he may not even say it. When he says, ha, ha. Then... My wife was healed at his meeting. We were in overflow four. That's if overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, overflow four. When Benihi came, we went there. An issue we have been praying for. You, know, you, you think that you have enough spiritual life. Until one man just got, he didn't mention her case. He didn't pray for her. He didn't lay hand on her. He was in the auditorium. We were watching from screen from overflow. We, we only discovered later that, ah, Jesus, Jesus has visited us. Because a man with a content. I'm saying this because I want to stir up something. How then do I speak into my future? When you are ready, you can join me. First Corinthians chapter 2, that same 2. Read verse 5 for me. That your faith should not... Now, there is a reason. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Look up. The reason why we are learning this is that you are going to be speaking into your life. You are going to be prophesying into your life. You are going to be declaring into the things that pertain to your life. But the content of your words when you speak is going to be the foundation of your faith. That your, the reason I'm saying this is so that when you say it shall be well with me, it will not be because you work in CBN. It will not be because you want a contract. It will not be because you are about to marry a girl whose father is a governor and they have promised you house. And then you look at your friend and say, man, life go better. is a lie. See, Jesus is saying that your faith will not be built on the wisdom of men, but on what? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, uh -huh. but in the power of God. Look at it. Look up. Are you getting my simple Bible study? I need this Bible study to sink to this point before we travel. Your faith can stand on something. Your faith can be built on something. But there is an agenda from heaven that your faith should stand on the power of who? Of God. Of God. Now, follow it. I need you to follow it. Jesus, help me. I shared this story before, so let me share it again. The year my dad passed on, he passed on on the 1st of December, so long vacation around this kind of period. I traveled to go and stay with him. For the first time, I traveled alone. It was not the whole family. He was a wealthy man. Yes. As at that time, the official house they offered him in his office was Meitama. So you understand. Uh -huh. He was a wealthy man. When I went there, there were two, he, he was living alone, but there were two guys that were the keepers of the place. They cleaned, they washed. So I, when I went there, there was no time, need to sweep. There was no need to cook. Have you ever eaten meat before? When you ate the meat and the sweetness finished, you remove the other one and throw it away. Has that happened to you? Anybody, let me see you. Yeah, I've done it many times. I, I did it that period. Because if you have gone to Benin, you know bush meat is uh, available on the journey. So we, we shattered bush meat. Mixed it with chicken, goat. So when you look at the stew, you will push meat to get stew to use and eat rice. His office was something else in that period. It was large. So I went in and sat down. He would go out sometimes and leave me in the office. So I sat down in his chair, rolled around, made myself some tea. And then he came in. And then he looked at me and said, Jude, sir, where would you like to finish your secondary school? Then the reigning school in Nigeria was Igbinadium in Benin. And I, he said Igbinadium. He suggested it. I said, okay, but let me finish where I am first. Then the second thing was that he now said, where will you want to go to your university? So he said, the U.S. or U.K.? I didn't know there are many. I knew U.S. I didn't know U.K. So I said, UK. 
The one I don't know. Let's explore it. Adventure. Then he asked me, your Christmas, do you want to wear Agbada or suit? I didn't know the meaning of suit. I knew they used to call it coat. So I said, suit. He wrote it down. It was certain that that was what I was going to have. By 1st of December, he passed on. My belief of going to school abroad was standing on him, not on the power of God. That, that's what the, the lesson I'm trying to bring out. That if you heard me in the public say, ha, with a go you came, man, we we'll would have been the first guys to jack and be welcoming those that are trying it now. When they come, we'll be teaching them how to survive. But the faith was on my father, my biological father. The problem was that he doesn't own his own life. Did he mean it to do it? Yes. Oh, you need to know who he is. Was he having the capacity to more than enough? You see, you can be declaring what your life will be because there is something you are building your faith on. It is, and it is not the power of God. I, I want to bring us, I want to bring us into the lessons. Have you ever expected money before? And your prayer changed? Come on, let me see your hand. And, and they mistakenly allowed you to lead prayer in that period. Then you came and tell people, declare soon you will get your breakthrough. Tell your neighbor you will see my own. I will testify. When you are saying I will testify, your, your, your I will testify was based on that money. And so you were, you were moving around lively, lively. And people say, what in the apple? Say, no, God is on my side. It's a lie. Money, you are expecting money. When Paul became a preacher and he was going to preach to the territory of Corinth, he said, I determined, I, I, I wanted to be sure the reason I'm telling you that God is bringing prosperity was not because I was banking on something. The reason I was telling you your life will be good was not because I was expecting something. It was because I had an encounter and I had trapped it and I had the power of God. And because I had the power of God, I could look at you and say, it shall be well. And if you ask me how, I don't know. The only thing I have as my strategy is the power of God. How many times do we declare things on the basis of the power of God? Don't worry, bro. I'll go soon hammer. Huh? Because your uncle, your uncle, who is now in charge of employment inside DPR, has collected your CV. He even called you yesterday and told you we are on stage four. Only one is left. If the DG approves this thing, oh boy, it's done for you. They will call you for training. In three weeks, they will call you for training. Then you woke up in the morning and you say, my life is good. You didn't say it because God supplied power. You said it because of your uncle. And when God will want to teach you, like I know he has taught many of us, is that he makes sure he disappoints you. The disappointment was not because he wanted you to be disappointed. It was because he wanted to be sure that your faith was not built on the authority of your uncle in the office. That your faith will be built on the power of God. Have you seen how many times we have not gotten results because we build faith on something else? That God is saying you can look up and say, by the end of this year, I am a multi-millionaire and you don't have a strategy. The only thing you have was that you had an encounter with God. And he gave you spirit. And he gave you life. And that life has precipitated to become power. 
So when you wake up in the morning, you make a decree about your future because you know by the power of God. What I'm driving at is that before you utter something, can we, can we pray for the supply of the Spirit? That means you can wake up in the morning. Before you say, my day is blessed, you just wake up and you start... Then you have generated power and then you are hearing God speak and then you hear a shout in your spirit and by the time the shout is settled you say my day is blessed and then when you walk, walk, walk out somebody you don't know the power of God they say how did you get there? I don't know him I just entered the car he looked at me and said give me your account I want to send you something that's not your uncle. Something superior to the economy of this world must have regulated that reality. So you see why many people have confessed what their future should be and it never happens. Because it was void of spirit. It was void of life. Apostle Paul calls it the supply of the spirit. So sometimes God will call you to come and preach for one hour. Only one hour. But because what you want to say must become something that will be built in the hearts of men by the power of God for four hours, five hours, you are just there. And all you are asking God for, spirit, life, spirit, life, spirit, life. So you will come out and tell somebody, just learn to say thank you, Jesus. And the person can see a reality and he can, he can replicate it and find answers because it was not vain words that was given him. So your daughter wants to go to school. You know you will not see her for three months. You hear that people are wayward in the school. That there are lesbians in the school. That apart from lesbianism in the hostel, people are getting pregnant. And then one week before she goes, every day you just go down. And you generate power. And then after like four days, you call your daughter and you sit her down. And you tell her, Naomi, you are a good girl. That's all. And then she goes to school. Somebody comes and says, Naomi, let's go and steal. And there's a vibration inside her. When, when people are going to steal, if she tries to take one step, her own body is doing like this, physically. Because what you kept in her was built on the power of God. In the night, a witch stays in the coven and it caused Naomi to initiate her. Naomi! And the reaction from her spirit rises. Naomi is a good girl. And that vibration enough you know, tells the witches, don't invite this one again. She will spoil everything inside here. That's how you utter things that work. That's how you speak into your destiny. You don't speak vain words. You speak spirit. And you speak life. Do you know what the power of God is like? very good daughter of mine before she came to submit came many years ago many years and came and met me i was still living a wayward life then and then i looked at her i said ah, it's like you're not ready to follow jesus that was in my mind and i told her go 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 after two years you will come back two years later she meandered into my house and said i'm ready for deliverance what keeps a word for two years and if you find out how far she traveled, but, but, but the word, the word. If you enter this cohort, you'll be dancing, but the word. Kai, boom, kai. If you are alone, I turn I'm la kama. I want to be that pastor that if I saw a word in your life, even if you enter a cult, even if they gave you blood to drink, that blood will pass away. 
15 years down the line, you'll be coming back in the night flying and you will encounter Jesus on the way to Damascus. And Jesus will say, hey, hey, go to the house of Jude and meet him. He give an come on. This thing I'm saying, I've seen it many times. That you can put a seed in a person and walk away. Jesus said he lost none except the son, of, except the one that turned back and said, I don't want. But when that one said, I don't want, he died. He couldn't, he couldn't stay alive because that thing will not stop moving. You can look at your child and after you have prayed for three months, you will just walk up to your child in the morning and say, leave and not die. And the moment you turn your back, that, that child must enter his old age. Because you came by power. There's a way you build life. Because Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And that word life for Apostle Paul was power. Encounters and dealings. You have to be a personality of many encounters and many dealings if you are going to be able to water. When, sometimes when Paul meets with governors and he wants to talk to them, he knows there are men in authority. He knows that principalities are contending over them. You know what he will start doing? He said, I wanted to tell you about a God I met on the way to Damascus. That day I met him, I had authority from the priest and from the Roman soldiers. I was backed up and charged up. But there was an encounter. I met a power that was superior to me. I, I want to tell you about him. He was invoking life. So Satan tells you to live your life the way you want at the, at the decisions you want. And you want that life to have power. Jesus used about 30 years to generate life. For 30 years, he was just living life. Until he went to the baptism site. And then he was anointed with power. And then the Bible says he came back in the power of the spirit. So Jesus will look at a person. And he will tell the person. Go and bring your husband. That's Jesus just, you know. The woman said, what have I got to do with you, Samaritan? That's her knowledge of Jesus. And just say, ah, just give me water to drink now. And can you go and call your husband? Then the woman say, sir. No, no, you were despising Jesus. Oh. But because he just spoke, she says, sir. Then Jesus speaks for that. And the woman looks at him. And he says, um, it's true that you don't have a husband because you have had five husbands and the one you are with now is not your husband. And the woman says, ah, I perceive. All of a sudden, her spiritual perception comes alive just because Jesus is talking. That's a man that speaks spirit. So when he speaks to you, the Holy Ghost is imparted into you to begin to understand his level of communication. Then the woman looks and says, we worship in Mount Gerizim and they tell us we cannot worship there but we should come to Jerusalem. And Jesus said, ah, that time has passed. The time that we are in now, let me update you. When the time where the true worshippers will worship God in spirit and in truth. What is worship? Simply put, is the submission of your life in adoration to God. The submission of your agenda in adoration to God. What was the woman's agenda? She came to fetch water. The moment Jesus spoke about worship, she dropped her water jar and began to go for evangelism. What kind of words were she hearing? You, you just started with the woman at the market. You ended with quarrel. Do you understand? The, the, your conversation with the market woman ended with quarrel. She could not find life. If you are going to build life, 
the dealings of God. When God say, sit here, you sit. Move here, you move. Every of those obedience gives you a capacity of life. And it is with that life you wake up in the morning and you say, it is well with me. So what are you speaking for? You are speaking from the place of life and it can react to every other thing because of my time. Ah. I don't have time to read this. Let me share it with you. When David went to see the battle with Goliath, please follow what I'm doing. I'm doing this because this is something you should learn to do every day. To speak into your life, into your day, into your circumstances. But I'm teaching you what to do before you speak. David went to, to the place and he, and he, he saw his brother. What is happening? Why is everybody shouting? Then the brothers, he heard the brothers, we have been fighting. Which fight? For 40 days, nobody has fought anything. Goliath comes out and talks. And everybody runs after. I, I still don't understand that thing till today. You will go out today, Goliath will talk. After he finish talking, you will run and go back. You will eat food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner as a soldier. Then you come back tomorrow again. Then Goliath will turn. You will, you will know that's what will happen the third day. Why are you coming out? Just go and train. They kept finishing food until David brought food for them. And David now said, um, what's happening? He said, that guy there, he's been making noise. Then David looked at him. David said, ah. I'll kill that guy. What will be given? Listen. Please, follow me as I'm telling my story. Because uh, he's doing something. So, what will be given to the person? I say, ah, this person, his family will not pay taxes again. Blah, 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 blah. He said, okay, take me to it. They took him to the king. And King Saul looked at the young boy. And said, oh, God, that guy has been fighting well since he was a youth. We don't, we've gone on research. We found out the victories he has won. You cannot fight a guy. Say, I have life. Say, ah, you have life. Eh? How? He said, I was in the bush. A bear came. I have an encounter. I dealt with the lion. I dealt with the bear. On that note, let's go and see that guy. So he went there. The first warfare Goliath was fighting was not the warfare of swords. It was the warfare of words. Goliath was emitting fear every day for 40 days. Who can fight me? Who can prosper from this lineage? That's what spirits do in your lineage many times. Nothing good can come out of Nazareth. And while fear and trembling is there, Apostle Paul teaches us wisdom. He said, but my spirit, even when there was fear of Goliath, But my preaching, even when everybody was trembling in front of Goliath, I sourced it from the spirit and from power. So when he went out, Goliath looked at him and said, he started walking, he said, this small boy, can you do anything? That's what demons do, they speak to you. They come and tell you, is this how you continue? The intent is to generate so much fear so that you cannot speak accurately. But Paul said inside fear, he was able to determine how he utters his words. Yeah, we are getting close. So David went there and then Goliath finished speaking. I thought David would just start fighting. Then David said, Help me read it. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 37. Help me read it. I need us to get it. I know our time is spent, but see, this thing is about a, a level of knowledge settled inside you. First Samuel 17, 37. You read 37, then you jump to 46. 17 verse 37. Quickly, sir. Okay. It says, David said, Moreover, moreover, the Lord that delivered of the power of, of the lion. I have a life with God who delivers. Continue. And out of the power of the bear. Uh-huh. 
He will deliver me out of the hand of the Philist this do you, Philistine. Do you see a man speaking forth? That's what I'm coming to teach you today. How to speak forth. The God that delivered me from the lion and from the bear, he will deliver me. If he had died in the hands of Goliath, we would have been sure that he spoke vain words. He has not met Goliath, but he's speaking. He has not reached the office, but he's speaking. He has not yet gotten the job, but he's speaking. He's not yet married, but he has started speaking into his marriage. But he was not speaking vain words. The God that he will. You have to build a life with God. Every encounter with God should be noted down. Forget not all his benefits. Continue, sir. If you finish 17, you jump to 37, you jump to 46. Okay. And Saul said unto David, mm -hmm. Go, and the Lord be with thee. When Saul, Saul understood that language, Ah, you have a life with God? Even though you are small. Go! God will be with you in this thing you have altered because you have life. Remember Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. That means if you utter a word into your future that is void of life, you utter the vain words, you may be setting yourself up for a feedback mechanism and not a favorable one at that. Read the next verse for me. 46. This day, Will the Lord deliver thee now? Into this my is hand. David talking to Goliath. He said to Goliath, The Lord will. When he met Goliath, he said, This day we oh matana. If you can start muttering in the spirit, I, I, I feel a weight coming already. He said, This day will I continue. Will the Lord deliver thee mm -hmm. into mine hand? Uh -huh. And I will smite thee. I will smite thee. And take thine head. And I will cut off your head. Meanwhile, the person talking doesn't have a sword. He's not speaking because King Saul is going to borrow him a sword. He's speaking by the power of God. That I, when I was going to kill a lion, I didn't have sword in my hand. I used hands. When I was going to kill the bear. So I know that there is a certain power if I invoke it. Somehow, provision will be made to cut off your head. He didn't say, this day, the Lord will deliver you and I will go and borrow money and start. No. He said, I will cut off your head. Have you finished verse 46? No, sir. Continue. Take thine head from thee and I will give the carcasses, I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. Pause. Please, please look up. Can, can you hear a seven? I, I need you to, when you read the Bible, I need you to see the picture of it. This is a 17-year-old boy looking at Goliath and saying, this day, I'll kill you. I'll cut your head. If you were there, say, bro, you get a knife. Meanwhile, if you understand the Philistines, they were the one that invented iron armory. So Goliath was covered with iron. Stone and iron. Haba. The stone will fall down now. But the guy carried stone and looked at a man with iron. Because he was not speaking just like that. He was speaking because there was a life he had encountered with God. I, and this is the part that shocks me. He said, I will, I will kill you. I will give your carcasses. And the, those, those other guys behind you there. I will dash them. Was he planning to kill them by himself or how? How was he planning to kill all the Philistines and give their carcasses to the birds? Did he have, was he going to send an invitation to birds and say, come? He knew that there was something if he makes an utterance that will make everything he has said to happen. Did you get that? The second thing is, Jesus said spirit and life. I started with the life part because I want to end with the spirit part. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are what? Luke 18 verse 1. I want to show you something in that place and then we pray. And don't forget to keep muttering tongues. 
to stir up your spirit because if God permits, we will speak forth this evening. Yes, we, we need to test and see that um, he is not a liar. Luke 18 and verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. He spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Look up. You know that scripture, isn't it? Let me play that song. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray. Oh, I will pray. If I don't pray. If you can be muttering the spirit, I want you to hear the, the explanation of something. He spake this parable. The aim of the parable, that after, if you understand this parable, this is the meaning before I even start. Don't, don't miss it. Don't miss the meaning of this parable. It is too critical. So I want to give you the meaning of the parable before I say it. He spake a parable to this intention, to this end, that men, turn and look at the person sitting beside you. Ask the person, are you a human being? Then let the person answer you. If the answer is yes, tell him if you are a human being. The only way to be alive is pray. If you don't pray, tell the person, if you don't pray, you will faint. Now, let me explain. If you have a lexicon of Bible to trace the original words that were used. The word faint there is a kakio. Ekakio, the first meaning of ekakio means to be utterly spiritless. Did you get what I just said? He's, he, ah, he's around. Thank you, Jesus. A man ought always to pray and not to be spiritless. Another meaning is to weary out. Another meaning is to be exhausted. But I'm picking the first meaning there because of our teaching. Men ought always to pray and not to be void or empty of spirit. It's coming now. So if you wake up in the morning without prayer, Without a bank of prayer and say, it shall be well with me. Your words are empty of spirit. So when Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life, he was telling us that every day the Bible says in the early hours of the morning, Jesus will always go to a secret place to Jesus, he will pray long enough. So when he comes out and say, Be healed! The words that he will speak, they will have spirit. And they will have life. A prayerless life is a life that utters empty words. When you know how much of the Holy Ghost is, is, exu is exhumed, or, or which word will I use now? Is released or transmitted in words. You, can't, you won't be a gossiper. Sometimes I wonder how people survive talking. Because if every time you speak, the Spirit of God in you flows out, how much of Him do you have? Jesus prayed long, sufficiently. Until the Bible says he had the Holy Ghost without measure. That means, have you driven a car before and the speedometer is 220? And then you hit the end. And then the speedometer is doing like this. The thing just caught. Kind. You, you have gone beyond the car. Can't be it. Jesus stretched the capacity of prayer to a point that if Jesus looks at you, the Holy Ghost will flow. In short, the Holy Ghost filled him so much that somebody touched the hem of his garment the hem. And there was a reaction 
from the issue of blood because of the supply of the Holy Ghost. And, and Jesus was, was not careless that because he was anointed without measure, Jesus was keen to say, hey, virtue, somebody has fetched power. I, I have not, I'm trying to go and raise a dead person. Somebody has fetched. He has fetched. Aside having a life with God, if you will speak into your destiny and the spirit of God and the power of God will go, it's because you pray. So he spake a parable. Men ought always to pray lest they will become void of spirit. So when you call a friend and say, Bro, I'm in need. Help me. Your help me is empty. And instead of the guy to help you, he looks for how to lie to you. He has the money. Say, bro, as it is now, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. But somebody else just sees the same person and is in need. And he doesn't even say it. He says, how are you doing? He says, I just feel like coming to greet you. Then just like I said, when I saw you, I felt in my heart that I should give you because while you were talking, the power of God in your words was able to make your words fruit by which you can eat good from it. Do you want to eat good from the fruit of your mouth? So when I help you say it's not about prayer. Oh God, pray. Gaius, pray. Oh. If one song will do anything that will be good in the lives of men, pray. Mrs. Jennifer, pray. Oh. It's not about singing. You're singing as sweet as your voice is. is we will enjoy the melody, but we may go back with our troubles. If they call you to come and lead prayer, pray first before you come. So when you come and say, Can we pray? The moment you say, Pray. Power will move from your words, and, and people will just start. The reason why you come and say, Would you pray? Pray now. Are you not going to pray? Why are you sitting like that? Shut up, leave, leave them alone. And, and when you leave them, just start. When you are praying 30 minutes, then turn to them and say, Pray. spirit and power, you now tell them pray. There, there is so much good about our lives. God is waiting for us to speak forth. God is waiting for you to speak forth. There is someone somewhere that have understood this principle. The person will enchant with demons and with death. And the person will speak into your destiny. And because spirit and death is operating from the other side. You will find your life being frustrated. But if you can stay with God until you speak life. Amaina mon kivini kai kabene devine tani ananta. Imini givene kabe ya ta. Belene givine ya. Yemene givine ka. Evene ta kabana peni. Ayan nante binana mukabi. Ivine nani ekevela nanai. Ayene gebene kafia nani uno kubuana ne imi ya kafi ene ka kebele na aisa mehane mamba peni kai uche 
If you come here, Nami Oko, Felegeti Biana Abana Capio, Fimina Nami O, Eminiki, Vinina, Nemenedai Amana Naka Veneti, Eminekai, Cape, O Benetek, Benegidian, Eminekai. Ame ananta, emina ka, kovela na mene ka, yevene kebe. Don't say anything. Yes, can you generate spirit and life? Ame ya kombe, yevene kavela kombe lege da, yevene kaviana. Aya mana kavela ni ibi eka no, yevene kebe ne ka, yevene ta. Who told you the situation will change? You can eat the fruit of your mouth if you know how to generate spirit and life. I cannot be small. I cannot be contained. I can't if I find a tambe quarter. Some humble letter keep I am in a tan, me on no god of any. If in a get a cap in a get a tie, I mean a known ta. If in a cap in a tie, if in a ta, copy letter in a key. Asamba ponan takai kombela kane. You will know when the time comes for you to speak forth. You will know. You will know. You will know. The Bible speaking about Elihu. He said there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the mighty give him understanding. He said I did not want to speak, but it was like wine bottles that were bursting forth from within. When the Holy Ghost will roar. You will speak forth. Because the flesh profited nothing. The flesh profits nothing. So I want to speak spirit. And I want to speak by life. I want you to target something. One thing tonight that you want to speak into and ask God, I come that I will not be spiritless. For men ought always to pray and not to be void of the backing of the spirit. Oh, do you remember his benefits? Something you can lay hold on and you will say, I tore the lion apart. I overcame the bear. And this day, ah, come on, Santai. The sickness will bow if you will speak by spirit and power. The addiction will bow if you will speak by spirit and power. The barricade will be taken away if you will speak by spirit and by power. By God, I run through troops and I leap over walls. is a cry for the supply of the spirit Paul said pray 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 that God will give me utterance that God will give me spirit and a child's words so that when I speak it will command deliverances to Jacob
until the horn of authority rises. And when that horn has risen, you will make a decree and it shall be established. I refuse to faint. So I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. I la para canta in a mota. The limitation will be cut off. The day you utter it, you will eat the good that God has intended. Can you decide? My words will bring me good. They cannot be empty. Sabebela kamba kaska balate, braka balaka babaske, braka teila kabaske. Your words will not be looked over again. They come by spirit and they come by power of the Holy Ghost. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. When I leave this world, I will leave by prayer. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. And when I leave this world, I will live in prayer. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. And when I leave this world, I will live in prayer. Hosi Samba Kappa Lamba Kappa. In just about three minutes, can you stop the Holy Ghost within you so that you can speak forth into your destiny? You can speak it to your marriage, you can speak it to your finances. Stop the Holy Ghost within. Is someone praying? The fountains are opening up, and out of your belly, you will speak forth reality such that we will command your I destiny. 
I will live by prayer until I leave this world. I will go in prayer. I came by prayer. I will leave by prayer. Parataka kumarakaya kapata ina sasaina. If you are a man, the only word we have been shown at that scripture is that you need prayer. If not, you'll be void of the spirit. I will leave my prayer. Your walls will be empty if you don't pray. Until I leave this pray, world. pray. I will go in prayer. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. Until I leave this world. I will go in prayer. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. Until I in my When you sense that authority, I will begin to speak into your destiny. I came by prayer. Begin to release spirit and a child. I will stay words. in prayer. Until I leave this world. I will go in prayer. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. Until I leave this world. I will go in prayer. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. In a minute, can you utter Until your words? I will leave this world. I will go in prayer. We expand by the counsel of God against every loss in two seasons. We run to truth. We leap of our walls. We have a million. In a minute, in a minute, can you make the keys into your destiny? I remember the gibi be mama mama ni 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 gidi ano e mama vi gidi ya ini a memory a mole bel a mama li kile a membo ya e bamba kapaboa e parakasta kapambela e pepe kasta kapraka kapaboa e pepe kapaboa kapaboa e parakasta e pepe kapaboa raka Let <laughs> Et 
Epa, 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 era pasapa, era pasapa, para escapa para mamá, e beleza ema, raca capamba babo, e para sataniate, e felito da mamambo, e para tu, e para aqui, para lima mamamunha, e felita da sabarume, para cobe setila tua, papa bombe bela, era papa sabambela, ela bebe mo, ia bebe mo. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, if you can stand, everybody. If you can, but if you cannot just sit. I want us to do something now. Listen. You are going to speak into your destiny now. Are you hearing me? And there's a simple statement in my spirit. I, I feel that anointing about it already now. Hear me. You make a decree, and this is the decree. Every curse frustrating my destiny, I come out of you now. I break out of you. Spe you are speaking into your, you are the one, you need the, is a, you are speaking forth. The way David told Goliath that day, every curse that has held back my God ordained destiny, I come out of you. I come out of you now. If you know it specifically, call it by name and tell it I am out of you. Jesus. The power of God has begun work already now. 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 You are coming out. 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 In the name of Jesus. Oh, that contention gives way. We speak forth by the Spirit and by power. We speak by the Holy Ghost and by power. Let the contention end. Let the contention end. Let the contention end. Let the yoke break.
In the name of Jesus. Can I have calmness? You can keep muttering in your spirit. Holy Ghost. From my left to my right. From the front to the back. Move. Move. Move upon the people. Yokes break. 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 Oh, let the mask on that person's face be removed now. That mask giving you a wrong identity, it goes off your face now. It goes off your face now. I speak to you poison in the spirit of this person. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Come out. There's somebody's mind that has been on siege. There has been a siege around your mind. You've been battling. I'm not sure if the person is on site or online, but it looks like the person is online. You've been battling with something in your mind. Father, let this thing tied around the person's mind. Let it break now in the name of Jesus. Break now in the name of Jesus. Father, the two people you want to touch, Holy Spirit, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them. Yes, it has begun already. Touch, 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 touch. Let their liberty be established in the name of Jesus. If you are sick, can you lay your hand where the matter is? If it is the whole of your body, just put your right hand on your head. If you are sick here, there's something wrong with you. Just put your hand there. If it's the whole of your body, put it all over your body. Father, I speak. In the name of Jesus, and I lay hold power of the Holy Ghost over every infirmity. I bind you in Jesus' name. Every pain I bind in the name of Jesus, and I decree be healed in Jesus' name. I speak into your body, heal in Jesus' name, to your soul, heal in Jesus' name. And every projection of attack upon your spirit be delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you lift up your hands, the two of your hands? Father, in a minute I ask. I don't know who this person is. But you know, help me, Lord. Locate the person, Holy Spirit, and let the chains break. Let 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 the chains break. In the name of Jesus. Now hold your hands forward like this. I want you to speak into your hands. Speak into your hands. 
speak into your hands. Tell your hands what you desire of them. In the name of Jesus, we have spoken forth. Father, you that performs the words of your servants, I ask that in your mercy you will perform our declarations to your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for tonight. For everyone present, I ask that your blessing will rest upon them. Will rest upon them. Will rest upon them. Give them a testimony strategic before the next meeting on Friday in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, many of you from tonight, you can drop your hands. Many of you from tonight, you will begin to have encounters of the deliverance you spoke about from causes. God will make you begin to see.